Hi everyone, I'm Jennifer from English with Jennifer, and I'd like to meet the request of some viewers who asked me to say the names of the 50 U.S. states and capitals. But did you know I already did this? Yes, way back when, in 2008, I went over all the names in a four-part video. I'll put the links to that older lesson in the video description, just in case you'd like to take a trip down memory lane. YouTube and my video making were quite different then. <laughs> and by the way, to those who subscribed early and stuck with me all these years, thank you. And to newer viewers, please subscribe. There's still so much more we can learn together. When my children were younger, I gave them placemats like this one to help them learn geography. I remember when they're in fourth grade, they had to pass a test on the 50 states and capitals, and I helped them prepare, which was a good review for me because most adults tend to forget a bit of geography as the years pass. But actually, I think it's a little unfair. If I'm not mistaken, Canada has 10 provinces. Australia has six states. American school children have to learn 50 states, how to spell them, how to say them, their capitals and their locations. It's a lot, don't you think? Well, the point of going over all the names is for you to hear my model and some possible variations. But before we get to the states, let's talk about regions. As I said, we adults tend to forget some of the specifics, but we have a general idea in our head. Sometimes we talk about the North and the South. We're referring to the Northeast and the Southeast. Our associations may be connected to history, particularly pre-Civil War. The Mason-Dixon line is a boundary between the states of Pennsylvania and Maryland. This line became a way Americans separated slave states from free states. Slave states in the south, free states in the north. We can also talk generally about the east, the west, and the central states. The east coast is here along the Atlantic Ocean, and the west coast is here along the Pacific. The East Coast breaks up into three regions, New England, the Mid-Atlantic, and the Southeast. Not everyone agrees on which states belong to which regions. For example, Texas. Some classify it as part of the South. Others see Texas as part of the Southwest. Yes, just like we broke up the East, we can also break up the West. We talk about the Midwest, the Southwest, and the West Coast, or Pacific Coast states. We can also talk specifically about the Pacific Northwest. Not surprisingly, the oceans and the mountains help determine the regions. Out in the West, we can talk about the mountain states, or the Rocky Mountain states. Do you know the short name for that mountain range? The Rockies. So the next time you hear an American say where they're from, you can clarify by asking questions like, Arizona, is that in the Southwest? Is that a Southwestern state? 
Kentucky. Is that in the South or the Midwest? Okay, while we're talking about regions, let's briefly mention time zones. How many time zones are there in the U.S.? Three, four, five, six? Six. On the mainland, the 48 states have four time zones, Eastern, Central, Mountain, and Pacific. Then there's Alaska and there's Hawaii. Hawaii doesn't observe daylight saving time, so it gets confusing sometimes for us to make the time conversions. Okay, now that we've gone over all the regions, let's go through the states and capitals. I'll use the map and we'll go region by region. I'll also list the state abbreviations, the two-letter postal code. For example, Massachusetts is MA, Maryland is MD. Did you know when I was in school, I also got quizzed on the postal codes. At one point, I had to memorize all 50 abbreviations. And did you know that each state has at least one nickname? Something that the state is known for. We become familiar with these nicknames because we see them on license plates of cars. I've spent a lot of time in the East, so I know the nicknames of most of these states. I don't know the others as well. But to be fair, I'll include the nicknames of all the states. Okay, here we go. Augusta, Maine. Maine is the pine tree state. It's also called vacation land. Montpelier, Vermont, the Green Mountain State. Concord, New Hampshire, the Granite State. Now I say Concord. Some might also say Concord. Let's not talk about right or wrong. Let's just talk about the variations you may hear. I say Concord. Concord, New Hampshire. Boston, Massachusetts, my state. Massachusetts is the Bay State. Providence, Rhode Island, the Ocean State. Hartford, Connecticut, the Constitution State. Albany, New York, the Empire State. Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Did you know that Pennsylvania is the only state that uses the two-letter abbreviation in conversation? For example, my hometown is Pittsburgh, PA. Pennsylvania is known as the Keystone State because of its central position within the original 13 colonies. Trenton, New Jersey, the Garden State. Most Americans will use a glottal stop when they say that capital city. You could say Trenton, but most will say Trenton, Trenton, New Jersey. Dover, Delaware, the first state. Annapolis, Maryland. It's called the Old Line State, but personally, I know it as the Crab State. They have wonderful steamed crabs in Maryland. Charleston, West Virginia, the Mountain State. Richmond, Virginia, the Old Dominion State. It was one of the 13 colonies. Frankfort, Kentucky, the Bluegrass State. Nashville, Tennessee, the Volunteer State. And I'm not sure why it has that nickname. If you're curious about any of the nicknames, Google them. It will be interesting reading in English. Raleigh, North Carolina, the Tar Heel State. Another nickname worth researching. Columbia, South Carolina, the Palmetto State. I hear Palmetto, Palmetto. 
the Palmetto State. Atlanta, Georgia, the Peach State. You may hear that second T dropped sometimes. Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia. Tallahassee, Florida, the Sunshine State. Now as someone from the Northeast, I say Florida, Florida with two syllables. Some people say Florida with three syllables. And there are also vowel variations. Florida, Florida, Florida. <laughs> Let's not talk about right or wrong. It's just about what you'll hear. Personally, I say Florida. Tallahassee, Florida. Montgomery, Alabama. The Yellowhammer State. That's a bird. Jackson, Mississippi. The Magnolia State. Little Rock, Arkansas, the natural state. I say Arkansas without an S. Some people say the S, Arkansas. I actually saw in a dictionary Arkansas as a possible variation. I don't hear that much, but apparently it exists. I say Arkansas, Little Rock, Arkansas. Baton Rouge, Louisiana the Pelican State. Notice how I use a glottal stop, Baton, like Trenton, New Jersey, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Columbus, Ohio, the Buckeye State. Lansing, Michigan, the Great Lakes State. You know that we have five Great Lakes, right? Lake Michigan is one of them. Indianapolis, Indiana, the Hoosier State. Springfield, Illinois, land of Lincoln, as in President Abraham Lincoln. Some people may say Illinois, but I think that's far less common. I say Springfield, Illinois. Madison, Wisconsin, the Badger State. A badger is an animal. St. Paul, Minnesota, the North Star State. Des Moines, Iowa, the Hawkeye State. Bismarck, North Dakota, the Peace Garden State. Pierre, South Dakota, the Mount Rushmore State. Lincoln, Nebraska, the Cornhusker State. Topeka, Kansas, the Sunflower State. Jefferson City, Missouri, the Show Me State. Denver, Colorado, the Centennial State. Cheyenne, Wyoming, the Equality State. I say Cheyenne, but I've also heard Cheyenne. Helena, Montana, the Treasure State. Boise, Idaho, the Gem State. Salt Lake City, Utah, the Beehive State. Carson City, Nevada, the Silver State. I say Nevada. I also hear Nevada sometimes, so take your pick. Austin, Texas, the Lone Star State. Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, the Sooner State. Santa Fe, New Mexico, the Land of Enchantment. Notice how I drop the T in Santa, Santa Fe. 
You don't have to, but it's very common. Just like we drop the T often in Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia, and Santa Fe, New Mexico. Phoenix, Arizona, the Grand Canyon State. Olympia, Washington, the Evergreen State. Salem, Oregon, the Beaver State. I think I usually say Oregon, but sometimes I may say Oregon. People may think that one variation is right and another is wrong, but be prepared to hear both. Go to a tool like Youglish, listen to about a dozen speakers, and you'll start to hear a preference. Oregon is probably what most American English speakers say. Salem, Oregon. Sacramento, California, the Golden State. We can drop the T in Sacramento. Sacramento can become Sacramento, just like Santa Fe, Santa Fe, Atlanta, Atlanta, Sacramento, California. Juneau, Alaska, our 49th state and our largest state. Honolulu, Hawaii, the Aloha State. Hawaii is our 50th state. By the way, do you know that half or more of our states have Native American names? Massachusetts is one of them. Interesting history. In terms of pronunciation, look for word stress patterns. This will help you develop a better instinct for saying unfamiliar names. For example, all the states with new have stress on the syllable that immediately follows. New Hampshire, New York, New Jersey, New Mexico. And the states with North and South share the same stress pattern. North Dakota, South Dakota, North Carolina, South Carolina. Search for other stress patterns based on syllable count. For example, find the states with four syllables. Say the names aloud. Do you notice a pattern? Listen. Pennsylvania, Indiana, Mississippi, Oklahoma, Arizona, California. And hey, let's not forget the capital of the United States, Washington, D.C. If you just say Washington, you may be asked, Washington, D.C. or Washington State? Washington, D.C., our capital is right there. It's between Virginia and Maryland. What does D.C. stand for? District of Columbia. Remember, Washington, D.C. isn't part of any one state. It's a district all by itself. I hope you found the lesson useful. If you'd like to compare this presentation to the lesson back in 2008, then check out the links in the video description. In that older lesson, you'll hear the pronunciation of other native speakers. And I also included the dates of statehood and the state flags. We'll end here. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Follow me on Instagram if you're interested in American culture and U.S. history. As always, thanks for watching and happy studies. Thank you to all the members of my channel and you super and truly marvelous members. Look out for the next bonus video. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and try something new. Download the app Holo and join me for a live stream. Students can hop on camera and get speaking practice in real time.